What's going on, people? This is Jay Ghost, and I wanted to sit here and talk about a few things in regards to JRPGs. Now, this is a more of a response video to not only Homer, but also Saber XT, who have made videos recently, and they'll all be in the underbar. So that way you can look at them, discuss them at you, as you see fit. The reason that I'm talking about them is because I've had a healthy diet of JRPGs since I was 13, 14, or actually a little bit older. My first one happened to be Secret of Mana, I mean Secret of Evermore, and not a lot of games have done different styles of JRPGs like they did on the Super Nintendo, at least in my opinion. So, I just wanted to throw in a little bit of weight at what was going on with the genre, how it evolved, and for the most part, since I haven't had a lot of time to recently sit down and do my thoughts, I might as well go ahead and talk about all the notes that I took based on what um, these both have been doing and talking about. Now, what I would recommend Anybody that's looking at this video, if you're looking for Saber as well as Homer's videos, I'll also throw in Mr. B Tongue, who actually has a great article and a great example uh, video in regards to how realism versus heroism work in a story. The reason that I'm bringing up Mr. B Tongue is because of the fact that with his video, you have basically a lot of people that are following one sort of example for a story and it, it's a great example it's the monomyth theory but people want to have things that are changed up and jrpgs really haven't changed quite as much at the at the top the triple a titles the squaresoft titles the atlas titles they all simply follow a monomyth theory in some way shape or form the story and the setting, the same epic story, those are going to be heroic stories. Whereas you probably don't hear a lot about the realistic stories. Now, when you're talking about a heroic story, you're talking about your links, you're talking about your nesses. These are guys that go in, save the world about 500 times before they sit here and finish um, fighting for breakfast. Um, other games include Final Fantasy VI, where you had to sit here and destroy the Emperor, and then after the Emperor was taken out, you had to sit here and destroy Kefka. These are the types of stories that follow the monomyth theory, the 17 steps, where you're going from taken out of your world, going on an adventure, and then eventually you get special items and special quests that sit here and make you the biggest badass and then after you sit here and defeat the demon you go back home taking those lessons with you that would be something similar to the monomyth now i would recommend that anybody looks into the monomyth they can look at joseph campbell i enjoy his work i have three of his books i still need to finish them but you don't what you don't see in JRPGs is a lot to do with the mundane. Now outside of JRPGs, you can see that in games such as Catherine. The reason being that is a dating sim where it's about the flawed types of heroes that you have that are d dealing with mundane life. Like for example, in Catherine, you have to deal with wanting to stay faithful with your girlfriend or having sex with a succubus or I'm spoiling it a little bit but you're having you're you're have to deal with cheating on her with this attractive young lady and how does that deal with or help your um the sheep along the way your friends are not only your friends but you know what is the advice that they're giving you how do you want to treat your uh girlfriend do you want to commit to her, et cetera, et cetera. These are mundane things, but these are things that give a lot of spice and life to a video game if you can make it entertaining in some way, shape, or form. However, that road is not really as well worn as, say, the monomyth theory. And that's one of the reasons why you don't see it quite as much in a video game. Now, there are video games that have done this 
rather well in Super Nintendo. I remember the Shadowrun series was well known for having multiple ways you can goals you can do in the game and it was an RPG and it was also a cyberpunk dystopia RPG which is something very very interesting to look into now the question is does this apply to JRPGs well I look into Saber XT and most of this I've talked about but the one thing that I want to look into is at 208 he talks about long convoluted plot lines and insulting stories now, the long convoluted plot line. Yeah, I actually agree with that because it does insult the intelligence. But just think about all of the bugs that people have to go through and how they have to program each individual part and they want to sit here and make sure that everybody is going the same way to find out what is going on and what is happening in the world and to progress the storyline. For the most part, padding an adventure out to be 80 hours when it's really not, that is something that should be addressed. And unfortunately, you're not going to get it in Square Enix or any others because they already gave us Final Fantasy 13, and I, quite frankly, would not want to play through 20 hours of a game just to sit here and find out how much fun it is. Because, I'm sorry, if you can't sit here and engage me in the first two hours... I'm not playing your game. I'm not going to sit here and even try that. But those are the insulting plot lines that most of these high-end developers are trying to give us. And unfortunately, it doesn't really work. Not for all these games. And there's plenty of variety to think about and consider. Now, for me, some of that is, well, if it's done well and it's a side quest or something... I won't have too much to say about it. It To me, it looks awesome. And it acts awesome. If it enhances the storyline in some way, shape, or form. But don't insult my intelligence. We played video games that have done far better and progressed with adult-oriented themes in video games than what has already come out. Now, at 10.30, he says that there is a lack of innovation. I've already talked about the alternatives at 5.46, so I'm going to go back into the lack of innovations. The games have barely changed, or the companies have barely changed. Now, I don't think that's accurate, because the games, unfortunately, have changed, as well as what is available in most forms of video games. It's kind of more or less that you have to expand on what these things are doing. You have to expand the genre a little bit further. And that hasn't happened, unfortunately, because most people don't consider the tactical RPGs, such as World in, The World Ends With You, as something that's similar to what is going on in the JRPG world. And unfortunately, with Japan, the innovation is a lot slower because they make so much money on just this one type of monomyth heroic story, most people, in terms of a business decision, are going to just go with what they know when the risks of a realistic story cannot be understood by most people. That is something that needs to be addressed later on. It's just something that hasn't quite happened yet because no one is really looking into say the indie market or how to innovate in the AAA industry especially when they're used to doing things a certain way I mean unfortunately Square is the biggest reason for that they got so big they became the Michael Jordan of video of RPGs and they stagnated with their old formula they didn't try anything new when's the last time that you saw a Chrono Trigger that was one of the best games that they had in the 90s. Now, there have been other games that have done different things, such as Valkyria Profile, which I absolutely love on the PSP, as well as Parasite Eve, which I think did a lot more in at least the second one in trying to do a murder mystery, whereas the third one was absolutely action-y. And I haven't played, en played it enough to comment. I have played it a little bit or seen the videos, 
but it just doesn't appeal to me quite as much as, say, the second one, which is more action-oriented. Now, other ways to diversify the JRPG, again, it's kind of hard to do when most of the games that are imported from Japan are not something that may appeal to a broad enough audience. But, again, Square is learning from the Bravely Default, which, thank God, they're doing. And hopefully they decide to import more because what has been hurting them in the past are games like Live Alive, which allow you to pick your protagonist and pick the story that you want to play at, play in. Um, there's been other innovations in video games that have not come over to the United States quite yet, and you only have to play them online. So there's plenty of time to do that, but some other ways to do it is understanding the genre. The JRPG genre is very, very diverse. I mean, tactical RPGs are one thing, but in terms of the biggest games that have been out there, I think that the main ones are actually going to be on the smaller platforms. The smaller platforms, such as the Fire Emblem series, are going to be great at doing something fairly unique, such as focusing on relationships, who lives, who dies. I believe that's one of the greatest innovations that JRPs have had by making you concerned for these characters and feel something emotionally attached to these characters when they die, when they marry. You know, that's something that's fairly unique in the industry that you don't see quite as much in the larger games. Maybe Valkyria Chronicles every now and then, but you don't see that in most JRPGs on that type of level. Now, smaller projects, smaller budgets. The reason that I sit here and put that, it forces a lot of people to make sacrifices on what they want and ideas that they want. Something to think about, something to consider, because I've seen a lot more innovation go on to the 3DS as well as the PSP Vita than I've seen anywhere else. And that's why I think that the handhelds are probably going to be an answer to most of the problems in the video game industry. But of course, I may be wrong. This is mainly just to put out my thoughts here so that way more people can see them and judge for themselves. And that's pretty much all I have. If you have any comments, be sure to leave them down at the below. Take care, and I'll see you next time.